I speak Californian. It's not as smart, it's slower than most English, so hopefully you have a chance of understanding what I'm saying. So, harmony. I bet most of you know more about music theory than I do, uh, but in its simplest, harmony is when two frequencies have complementary wavelengths, so the energy is not restricted, it lasts a long time, and two notes in harmony will develop a cloud of colorful notes around it. Um, so those two things, sustain and overtones, is really what you look for when you play many, many guitars trying to find the good one. Um, that's where you go, ah, that's the one. Um, you see the braces, uh, and, and if you see a closer photograph, you see that they're different shapes. Um, the, the trick, the secret here, is to make each of those a frequency that together form a chord and give sustain and overtones. And uh, this is done by shaping, listening, and uh, uh, remember this is California, we make this really simple. <coughs> Rather than using a, a, a scientific device to tell us each note uh, and do it this way, um, that would be probably very frustrating because if you could tune one brace accurately then the next by the time you move the third they've all changed and this would be a very inefficient way to go about it but uh, let's remember that sustain the long-lasting vibration is a product of harmony and harmony also produces the overtones so when we evaluate this for being in tune we really only need to pick one of those to measure um, it's like a little stool with three legs. If you don't have one, you don't have any. So we choose to measure sustain. And um, here's a really nice uh, piece of wood I'll tell you about in a minute. But that is by chance. It's the, it's the size of the piece. It's where I hit it. But in a thin piece of wood for an acoustic top, um, uh, the difference in being in tune is remarkable in what you hear. So instead of doing each of these to a note, we, we work them from experience and practice until we get the most sustain. And at that point we know that we have the top in tune with itself. If you do, um, or somebody that does, wants to know this, something that many, many builders miss is um, you see a lot of uh, YouTube and videos of people tuning the guitar top unto itself. Um, that's great, but when we marry it to the guitar body, there's a new note or frequency, and that's the airspace of the body. And that airspace has a note, a frequency. Um, and if it doesn't match what we've done with the top, it's like playing a random note after you play a beautiful chord. Sustain can stop, and, and it's flat, not very interesting. So we need to do a secondary tuning to bring this assembly of braces in tune with that airspace. And the way we do it is uh, when, we, when we sand the final scratches out of the top for cosmetic, we're going in a circle around the bridge and creating a very small um, uh, difference on the edge. You know how the violin has this return as it comes up to the edge, there's a little swoop, but again, so it does that, and I bet it's under a tenth of a millimeter. And as we do this, we're lowering this in-tune assembly so its fundamental frequency lowers until it matches the airspace. And bing, then we have the sustain and the overtones back. Uh, you could do this probably, if you practice anything one way for long enough, you get very intuitive. I do this by how much air blows on my face because the guitar is becoming more and more efficient as it does this. You can also hear the sustain and the, and the complexity come up. So there's, there is the simple way to get in tuneness with the guitar. Now, the, the, <laughs> if we have any secret, and we don't, we always get back more than we give, so I don't keep secrets. But if we had a secret, it's time and the expertise that comes through practice. And in 40 years, we've gotten, if I may say so, very, very good at this in order to ensure that each guitar has the maximum sustain and the development of overtones. My work with people is to begin with the guitar that you already have. Um, what would you like more of? What would you like less of? Um, and then we can talk about these different parts of tone. So I invite uh, any of you, if you do want to discuss guitar making, which I have no trouble talking about. 
obviously, um, to give me an email. And I'll make sure that stays here, and uh, I'd be happy to help with that. Um, uh, the A um, um, couple more parts of sound that I missed here. Uh, presence. Uh, the guitar uh, projects, um, but uh, w we'd like to control how far it projects. Um, do you play your guitar to fill up a concert hall, or do you want a guitar that's presence is here for this audience or even a microphone? If so, you don't need to move as much air, but you want the same quality of sound. So here's a very cool trick. Um, uh, classical makers don't like me telling this secret. Um, where the, when you look in the sound hole, uh, you know the little uh, wood in the corner with the slots in it? I call it the lining. Um, and the trick in the violins um, is to use a wood that does not conduct resonance well at all. So it isolates the top from the sides. When the strings are plucked, it's like dropping a little pebble in a pool and the ripples move to the edge and instead of transferring into the sides where you would hear volume, it goes back into the guitar, pumps more air and fills up the back of the hall. Um, if we were trying to bring the sound closer in, we can use a material that is more resonant, conducts more energy into the side and you hear more presence here, which is you know, a very, very cool thing to do. Um, the, uh, uh, there's a, a lot of stuff that I'm not going to talk to you about here about adjustable truss rod, some of the things we design in our guitar to make it restorable. It's a fun word. Uh, restore means to bring something back to its original intention. Uh, repair is to just fix it. And uh, uh, back to the violin uh, school in France, they had a code of ethics, and one of these was restorability. When you make an instrument, it's very expensive. You're not only thinking about your customer, uh, but their children, and maybe the children beyond. So if the instrument's made thinking of restorability, you add a lot of value to this as an heirloom. So the glues that we use, the way we join our wood together, and the finish we use is all designed for restorability. The finish is a cool side trip here. Uh, modern guitars can be made uh, quickly by using a polymer uh, that's, that the solids react to ultraviolet light. So you spray it on, shine a light, dink, it's hard, you can polish it. It goes to market and saves money. But it doesn't look as expensive as we like it dampens the sound and if you break it it's like breaking glass you can repair it but you can't restore it so the finish on these guitars comes from the fibers of cotton uh, the fibers of cotton are cellulose which is the same thing the tree is made out of so when we dissolve these fibers of cotton we get a clear liquid that I'm taking a leap here but it's like liquid wood so that's what's applied to the guitar so we have wood on wood that helps the sound it looks beautiful and we can restore it to its original intent and that adds a lot of value to the instrument so on the guitar we're made of cellulose we finish with cellulose even the pickguards made of cellulose to have this compatibility